This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Citrix GoToAssist, the number one global market leader in remote support. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morris, and today we are checking out more Wireshark, specifically downloading, displaying, and the BPF syntax. So first off, we had a comment from our YouTube page from a fan who said, how do I download Wireshark in Linux? Now, while I'm just simply using an executable install on my Windows PC, we also walked through a Linux installation previously on Hacktip64. I highly suggest also installing the WinPCAP software that is included with Wireshark. This basically lets Wireshark put your computer into promiscuous mode. By letting your network card sniff traffic in promiscuous mode, you can not only see the traffic coming to you, but also going to all sorts of targets on your network. Now, let's take a closer look at the main window of Wireshark this week. So I'll go ahead and pull it up in my computer here. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and done a really, really simple uh, packet capture of my network. Nothing too special there. I'm not looking for anything specific, but I wanted to show you all the different main windows. So first up, up here at the very top is the packet list. So this is what you're going to see mainly up at the top. There, so you can see everything that's going on here. Okay, so first up is this packet list window up here. This is the main window, it's color coded, it's listed by time, the packet is captured as well. You'll see the number of the packet over at the side, so this is going to be the specific number during the entire packet capture. So since I have mine listed by protocol at the moment, I see 821 here and then 697. However, I can switch this to have numbers first. Then you see time and you can change this as well and I'll go into more information in just a moment. The source, so this is where the packet is coming from, the destination where the packet is going to, the protocol for that specific packet, the length of the packet, and more information about that packet. So this can be anything from uh, if there's passwords and usernames, or if there's a specific image that's being sent during this packet, things of that sort. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. And then next down underneath that is packet details listing. And this is a whole bunch of information about a single packet. So if I go into my computer and I click on a specific packet, you'll notice that it changes down on the packet details listing. So I'll click back and forth on here, and you can see that the destination is changing and a bunch more information. And if I want to, I can go even more into detail about all the specific info about each and every bit of that packet. Furthermore, you can expand the details pane and you can click on different parts of the packet to view details about each and every segment of that one packet. And lastly is the packet bytes pane. So every single time I click on something in the details section, you'll see that it changes down here on the packet bytes. So these are the actual little bits of raw data flying back and forth from the sender to the receiver. So this is what the computer is seeing, all that crazy stuff at the bottom. Not a lot is legible unless there's plain text going on, but that's basically what you're gonna see. Now you're probably wondering about the colors on this packet list pane. These are for the different protocols. The color, color coding basically just gives you a really easy way to differentiate between all the different protocols, or you can also list the pane by protocol as well. Now you can change these as well if you want to by going up to view and all the way bottom to coloring rules. So I can go here and you see a lot of information in black. There's uh, ARP is in yellow. ICMP is pink. And if I scroll down a little bit more, I see HTTP, which you see back here currently in that light green color. Now, if I want to, I can also edit each and every one of these. I can change it to be a certain background color. So if I wanted to, I could make them a really hot pink. So I'm gonna change that to hot pink now, because why not? Haha, and now I have a completely hot pink Wireshark because that's really hardcore. <laughs> now we're gonna be right back with a few more customization options right after the break. With GoToAssist remote support, you can provide live and unattended remote support to any computer or mobile device. You can screen share with employees to diagnose and fix their support problems faster and more effectively. And you can also use GoToAssist apps to deliver support anytime, anywhere, no matter where you are. GoToAssist is easy to set up and it's easy to use. You can actually set up in less than a minute. So sign up today for GoToAssist and get another Citrix tool free for six months. Visit GoToAssist.com and get started, but 
but don't wait because this special offer ends October 10th. Again, that's visit gotoassist.com and sign up to receive this special offer today. And we're back with more customizing, more fun and customizing on all those different Wireshark displays. So first off, let's dive deeper into time displays. So since time displays are extremely important whenever you're trying to analyze an entire network, we also have a whole bunch of options for viewing timestamps. You do have the option to do the time reference option. Now this is over under edit. So if I click on edit, I can go to set or unset time reference. And this is what I showed you previously that it will just change the time to REF and that'll be a really e easy reference for you guys so you can find that specific packet that you're looking at. You also have the options under display options uh, to view different timestamps as well. So if you go to view, go down to time display format, there are a ton of options under here. Now I prefer the top one, the date and time of day, because it's going to give me not only the date of each and every capture of each and every packet, but also the hour, the minute, the second, and the milliseconds of each and every one. Now, you may be wondering why milliseconds, why does that matter? Well, packets run through so fast. In a few minutes, you could get thousands and thousands of packets. It's really important to be able to timestamp each and every one down to the millisecond. Now under capture, we also have this thing called interface list. So if I go under here and click on interfaces, showed you a little bit of this previously, but we'll go a little bit deeper. These give you all the different interfaces you have, and then you also have a whole bunch of different options. Now specifically under capture, you can also get to this under options as well right there. So. Now that I have options open, I can go through here and save my findings into multiple files depending on the size or the time of the capture. This is found down here. You can click on use multiple files and then it'll create a new file every single time I hit one megabyte, one gigabyte, that's a huge file, or one kilobyte. So if I keep it on one megabyte and then I can choose to create a new file every one minute, if I have both of these checked at the same time, it's gonna give me the option. Either it'll create that file after it hits one megabyte or it'll create that file after it hits one minute, whichever one comes first. And then I'll just simply turn that off if I don't plan on using each of those. Also under capture, there is this option called filter so I'll go ahead and close this and show you what that looks like. Capture filters. These are going to filter just those specific packets as opposed to just capturing every single thing on the network. These capturing filters can be really useful if you're looking for specific tra traffic and you don't want to deal with all of the other packets that you could potentially get on your network. Another thing that you should probably know about is BPF syntax. Now I'll go back under the options for that under options, here we go. Okay, so you see this thing over here that says compile selected BPFs. Now that, it doesn't really look like it makes much sense to be honest, but it does. So under the options, there's this little button called compile selected BPFs. BPF stands for Berkeley Packet Filter Syntax. All right, this is the syntax that will apply to all the filters that you choose for your capture. So BPF is a syntax used by WinPCAP and is really, really important because this is what's going to make the computer understand whatever filters that you make and how those filters are used in Wireshark, if that makes any sort of sense. <laughs> BPF filters are called expressions and expressions have a whole bunch of different parts called primitives, which basically have a bunch of parts called qualifiers. Now we're going to wait until next week to really break down what the heck I just said. But remember when we did Linux terminal command the whole 101 series about the Linux terminal, and each command has a syntax that involved a command, an argument, and an option. So these expressions are kind of the same thing. You have a whole bunch of different options and arguments inside of that one command. So I'm gonna show you one of mine, one of my expressions, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So if we can zoom in up here at the top, you see that I put in a filter right here with a whole bunch of different expressions. So this is my BPF syntax going on. This is an expression that specifically involves a Wi-Fi pineapple and a phone. So if you want to, you can go down to the comments, tell me what this capture is doing 
down there in the comments below and I'll let you know if you're right or if maybe you're on the right path. You're close, but not quite there. So all based on this expression. Now let me know, of course, what you think below or you can send us a comment. You can email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust.